Hello everybody and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. I'm sorry it's been a little while. Uh, it's just been really busy around here and so I've had some ideas to do these videos for a bit but life as we all know has its own priorities. So today we are going to look at historic tarots as you can probably tell. Um, I specifically had a request from a viewer to kind of go through all the tarot deck producers that make historic tarots. What's available on the marketplace today? Who are those uh, producers? What do they make? What's the quality, etc.? So I'm going to do my best to answer that question. Um, again, all of my opinions are my own, so um, you know you can take them with a grain of salt. You're certainly welcome to have a different opinion from mine. That's absolutely fine. And I will say that I have identified with the help of the tarot history group on Facebook, I've identified 21 people or companies that currently, as of September of 2023, make historic tarot decks. Now I did frame this as historic decks, so pre-1900 is what I'm calling that, and also projects that were not one-offs. So companies or individual producers that make more than one style of thing or had more than just a single promotion or Kickstarter or whatever. So this does not include everybody that's ever made something, but I wanted to look at um, companies that are sort of routinely in business or artists that are routinely in business and have made multiple decks. That's how I'm framing this. If I have left out anyone, please let me know in the comments. And I'll also say that there are eight on this list that I don't actually have a, a copy of, but I will talk about. Um, so there are certain decks and deck producers that are either not of interest to me or out of my budget, or I just haven't been able to collect them because they're a little bit hard to get a hold of in the United States. You know, some European producers, it just it becomes a little bit tricky to, um, to do that. And because there are 21 producers I want to talk about, I decided to break this up into three parts. So here's part one, and I'm going to go in alphabetical order. All right, so the first producer I have is Agnes Kepler of Cardigram. And you'll notice I just have a single card here. Um, Agnes Kepler makes very beautiful, what I would call fine art decks, where she um, uses historic types of paper. Um, she even gets handmade paper in some cases. She prints things using um, reproductions of uh, historic tarots, and she uses, um, I'm not sure exactly what, I don't think she carves wood blocks, but she somehow uses some printing technique that mimics wood blocks, and then she glues together um, the papers using historic types of glue and uses, you know, soap and other treatments to finish her cards. She also does hand gilding of cards, either on the edges or on the faces of the cards. So her product is definitely a luxury one. Um, I've never owned a full uh, handmade Agnes Kapler deck, but I had bought uh, one that she had reproduced onto Cursina grade cardstock. So she does also do limited runs of um, some of her decks on commercial card stock and I, I thought it would be great to have a, a cardigram deck in my collection um, However, when I got it, I, I didn't like the combination of the historic look on modern card stock It just doesn't seem right to me and that's something that I'll probably reiterate a couple of times I don't I don't like that feeling and so I ended up trading um, I have not received the reciprocal uh, trade yet, but I, I traded that deck away to someone um, so uh, so that they could send me something else. So that's Agnes Kapler of Cardigram. Um, I will say that this particular card is incredibly thick. It is very much like a drinks coaster. Um, in fact, I have a drinks coaster here, and they're not too far off in terms of thickness, uh, as you can see. So. Um, they're, they're quite heavy duty. I don't know if all of her cards are this thick, but it would be an incredibly thick deck um, once you got the 78 cards together. So I've seen people shuffle her cards, and I don't, again, know, maybe this was a test out of thicker paper or something like that. Um, but I'm not quite clear on how the handmade ones really sort of shuffle. Um, I don't honestly know that I would even bother with that. Um, to me, getting one of her handmade decks would kind of be like getting uh, a Visconti um, or something like that. It would really be more of a collector's item, something to look at and treasure more than to, you know, shuffle heavily. There you go. Um, beautiful work from Agnes Kepler at Cartogram. 
All right, the next deck I can show you is this one from Artisan Tarot. Um, and I'll link everybody's shops and things uh, down below or Facebook page or whatever they have. Um, Artisan Tarot is a new-ish company. Um, this deck was made in 2021. I think that's when they began, 2020, 2021, something like that. They make a variety of tarots. This is a Jean, Jean Dodal. Uh, they make a Noble. They make a few other ones. Um, and they do complete restoration. So they clean up the images and make them nice and crisp, as you can see here. But they're all based on original artwork. These are retraced and recolored. And I do like the way that they choose the color palettes. They're a little bit more earth toned than the super bright oversaturated uh, version by you know, companies like Grimaud or others um, that have kind of a garish color palette. palette. Um, and I don't mind the cleaned up look on modern cardstock, which is what Artisan Tarot uses. They use a linen finish, really nice, thin, flexible, um, beautiful kind of um, cardstock that I enjoy. Of course, they have the historic backs. In this case, this is an ermine pattern. Um, so yeah, it's it's really good. I'm going to give a, a shuffling demonstration for each one. So here we go with the Artisan Tarot, just so you can see what this is like. beautiful and very easy to shuffle. So yeah, there's Artisan Tarot. Next up, I have a company, Del Negro from Italy, and they have a number of tarot decks. A lot of them are sort of historic inspired and fantasy historical reproductions gathered from multiple sources. So I'll put up a few pictures while I talk about them, but they, they're not purely a historical card company. However, they have been around for a very long time and they produce a variety of different kinds of decks um, for gameplay. Um, they have full tarot decks. They have a lot of tarot chino and taroki decks for fast paced uh, gameplay or competition play, as well as just plain old playing cards. Um, and they do sell to casinos as well. So again, theirs would be a casino grade card stock, very uh, tough wearing, etc. Um, I recently found a deck called the Tarocco Itrium Fido Regno de Sicilia, which I think is based on medieval Italian art. It's not a reproduction of any particular deck, but it's based on medieval Italian art, and it looks really cool. So I'll put up a picture of that as well. But yeah, um, Del Negro, a great company. Um, they have some really fun tarot decks as well, the Tarocchi uh, Fantastico, I think it's called. So I'd love to own a Del Negro uh, deck at some point. I did by mistake once purchase um, a copy of their Tarot Bacchus, which is all about Bacchus and wine production. The suits actually have to do with wineries and wine production. Um, and it's not the other Bacchus deck that I'll show um, in a later episode of, of this series. Next up, I have a card producer that I have a deck from, but I don't actually have any of his historic reproductions. So this is Patrick Valenza of the Deviant Moon, and he does produce reproductions based on his own collection. He buys 18th century, 17th century decks, historic ones, and then he uh, makes facsimile of those. Um, I will point to a video on my channel uh, down below where I compared his gas man his version of the gas man which this one uh with this one which i'll talk about in the next edition of this series um and again it was kind of that slick cardstock old uh old paint job um sort of thing that i didn't like so that combination of ultra modern cardstock with ultra ancient art um and you know ink bleed and that kind of thing just didn't do it for me so I ended up passing that one on, um, but he has a couple of different uh, historic decks that I'll, um, I'll link to in his shop uh, that you can check out. And if that's your thing, that's that's super cool. I do love the Triumphi della Luna. I have two different versions of this deck, and I just think his modernization of historic decks based on his own tarot study is really well done. So that's where that's where I'm most interested in his work, but wanted to mention him. All right, next we have a French company called Edition Civilixi. Um, it's written out with the Roman numerals after it, so I'll put that on the screen, but you actually do uh, pronounce that. It's not a number, um, even though it looks like that, and the the French pronunciation is Civilixi. It's 
It's based on the poem in the Vavil Tarot, um, which is available on their website. So they do museum reproductions, so reproductions, facsimiles of museum copies, which means that the uh, print is blurry, the ink is all over the place, the line work is difficult to, um, to see, um, and there are museum stamps on every card. And that can be quite frustrating um, to really be able to see what's going on in the cards. However, um, I do like the card stock a lot. I think this one is actually um, produced in conjunction with Grimaud, um, which is another French card uh, manufacturer. And so the cardstock is excellent. Um, and I would say the clarity is as good as it can get for a museum replica. It's just that, you know, a lot of it is kind of blurry and sloppy, um, especially on the cards where you have a lot going on. Like see, you have a lot of detail on each of these cups, including fine line work and different colors, and it's just kind of hard to see. So this is the um, Anonymous Tarot of Paris. I've showed it on the channel before. And I would love a cleaned up copy of this particular one even though I like the historic kind of vibe of um, the facsimile, it would be nice to be able to really see the detail. Like she has all this line work on her skirt, but I can't really make it out. So um, there are a couple of other producers that have cleaned up this particular deck, but Edition Civilixi really just goes for the, um, the museum reproduction. And they also have a Viville, which is even, you know, the original of the Viville is even sloppier than this. So. Um, I don't have a Vivil in my collection, and if I do get one, it's definitely going to have to be a cleaned up version. Um, but yeah, Edition Civilixi out of Paris. And here is your shuffling demo. This one's very snappy and slippery. It's definitely one where if you don't get a good grip on it, then the bridge will just, you'll have 78 card pickup because it'll kind of explode and go everywhere. Next up, we have a Spanish company called Fournier. And again, they produce a variety of different decks. Some are fairly close to historic reproductions. A lot of them are kind of modernized historic reproductions, which is what this Spanish tarot is. And then they have some completely modern decks like the Tarot Balbi and others. Um, so this is a, uh, a deck based on a 1736 uh, Spanish deck that I can never remember the name of. Uh, yes, here it's it. Here it is. Uh, Giuseppe Ottone in the village of Cervala Cesia. So that is the inspiration for this deck. But I think the line work is very close. So I'm including it, um, even though it has been recolored. Uh, I'm including it as a historic deck. And I got this of all places in a Japanese auction, and it was still sealed when I got it. So that was really cool. I also got it for five dollars. So um, that was kind of amazing. So the Spanish Tarot, it is still in production from Fournier, even though this is a vintage copy. And it's beautiful. Um, it has really bright colors and it shuffles like a dream. This is the smaller kind of Marseille style, size cards. And I really enjoy the way these decks feel, how they handle and all of that. So this is the Spanish Tarot by Fournier, or Fournier. I'm not sure how you pronounce that in Spanish. And my last card producer is Giordano Berti of Renascimento Italian Art. So Mr. Berti creates a variety of tarots, some historic, some not. Um, and here are two that I'll show you. Um, I have actually four of his decks in my collection. He's the most that I have from any one producer. Um, but he does he does Swiss decks, he does German decks, he does a lot of Italian decks that nobody else does. Um, he does a little bit of French, but mostly other places. And that's what I like about him is that he he does stuff that nobody else does. Um, and you know, a lot everybody does a Dodal, everybody does a Noble, every does everybody does, you know, some of these main French um, uh, French ones, but um, if you're looking for something different, you have this. And he has really nice card stock. Um, so he has a variety of different card stocks for different decks. Um, I'll show you these two because they're a little bit different. So um, I'll show you this one first. So this is the Vergnano reproduction. And you can get his cards in two different style of box. This is the fancy box, um, but he also makes one that's a little simpler and therefore a little bit less expensive. Um, all of his decks come with some kind of um, historic 
uh, manual on tarot and it talks about um, the history of the cards and kind of the influences on the particular region of, of the particular deck that you're looking at. So this one is about Italian tarots. Um, and then sometimes he will also include extra cards. No, not in this one. Okay. Um, he usually does a handwritten note. It's really nice. And then the cards, the additions are numbered with a, with a certificate of authenticity here. And then this one has it's kind of a waxy um, cardstock, almost as if it were soaped. So almost a, as if it were a historical deck with that kind of waxy soapy coating. It's quite nice. Um, it is matte, as you can see. It doesn't really reflect the light in an obnoxious way. Um, the only critique I have of this particular deck is that the artwork isn't perfectly centered, and so you get kind of a white border and then a cream um, interior on a lot of the cards. So if, if that bugged you, I guess you could try and trim these, but they're, they're not really centered. The original artwork isn't evenly trimmed, so you might have a hard time like centering these. Um, but it doesn't bother me. You know, it's, it's fine. And again, his cards shuffle very well, so I'll show you that. Very, very flexible. And I don't believe these have any kind of a core, so they don't necessarily bounce back the way that Casino Cardstock does. But I also haven't had them bow on me. So they shuffle very nicely. So that's one kind of cardstock he uses. And then another kind of cardstock that he uses is more like, it's more papery. Um, and this is absolutely my favorite cardstock. It has this kind of hollow, lightweight quality. I don't know if you can tell from that noise. Um, this is the Miller, which is a German deck, kind of Swiss German deck. And it just has the best, the best cardstock. It's flexible. Um, but it absolutely feels like paper. It absolutely feels like it could have been a historic deck from the, what is this from? 1780. And this deck is a little bit long for my hands, so if I'm being klutzy, it's just my, my own difficulty, not the deck's fault. Um, but it shuffles so well. love handling these cards. Absolutely a treat. And I want to mention um, that uh, Giordano Berti also creates other kinds of tarot. So um, he creates some uh, original ones. He also writes introductions for other people's tarot decks. So this is an Egyptian style tarot that he apparently was involved with. Um, I don't know much about it. Uh, this was just an extra card that I received in one of these um, packs. He usually includes an extra card or two from other things. And then this is like a modern alchemical deck, I guess. Um, again, I don't know a lot about it, um, but this is the front and the back. And he also makes Sibyllas and some other styles of card decks, so they're not all um, just tarots. I think he has a couple of oracles and other things. So I'll link to his shop on Etsy as well. And he does have kind of a, a build-your-own jumble sale kind of thing where you can get, you know, if you buy two, you get a discount or something like that. So uh, I think he's great and he's very, he's very nice and he'll respond to you on Facebook if you have uh, questions about his stuff. So uh, Facebook or Etsy, you can always contact him. He's, he's quite nice about getting back to people. And he also teaches classes. Um, a lot of them are in Italian, of course, um, but uh, he does offer classes and he offers them often uh, with English captions. So I think that's pretty cool. So this concludes part one of the series and please stay tuned for part two coming up next week. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you soon.